Welcome all to Eat, Drink, and Explore with Cece. Today we're making a luscious, comforting, roasted butternut squash vegetable lasagna. And it is something that you can put on the table. You can serve it at Thanksgiving as one of your vegetarian options for those folks who are not indulging in turkey. Or you can just make it year round. I usually make this year round, absolutely love it. Okay, so the ingredients that we're going to need is you're going to need the star of the show, which is the butternut squash, and you want to look for a long-necked butternut squash, and you also want to see that the skin is also a thin skin, so that it just makes life so much easier to peel with a potato peeler, other than having to go and do it with a knife. That's what I like to, to look for. I love to have that long, elongated neck. I call that part of the butternut squash the tenderloin of a butternut squash and you'll see why I look for that later on in the recipe. You're going to need about 8 ounces to 12 ounces of cremini or white button mushrooms. You're going to slice those down. You're going to need one large onion or two medium onions and we're going to just peel them and slice those and that we're going to saute those, saute those together. We also are going to use some carrots. So you want to look for nice big chunky carrots that are abundant at this time of year. So we're going to pull those out and you'll see why we need that as well. You're going to need a tub of ricotta cheese. It can be any type of ricotta. It can be extra fine, just regular or smooth. Up to you. I just look at whatever's on sale and buy that. And you're going to need some frozen spinach. And I used the frozen spinach. I used 16 frozen spinach pellets, let's say, uh, or pucks uh, for this recipe. You're going to need a grated Parmesan cheese. Again, that's to taste. You're probably going to need about, if you're going to use what I did, I did about a quarter cup. And you're going to need some grated Italian type of cheese, either uh, mozzarella or you could buy the combination of, uh, it's called Italiano shredded cheese, which is a combination of mozzarella, Parmesan cheese, and um, I think they have provolone in it as well. So you want to look at that. You're going to need at least one bottle of the strained tomatoes, which they call passata, some garlic, and you're going to need the spices. So the spices that we're going to do for this dish, very simple. You're going to need some sea salt. You're going to need some dry thyme, some cinnamon powder, some a cinnamon, a nutmeg powder, and some black black pepper as well. That's, that's the basic that I put in this dish and of course a little bit of olive oil and butter um, in the background. <clears throat> I actually used avocado oil in this and you'll see why instead of the olive oil. So those are the ingredients that we need. So let's now get into getting this all prepared. So what we're going to need is we're going to need the onions chopped in half circles. So cut it the, I just cut the onion in half. We're going to be layering this into the lasagna and I am also going to be uh, caramelizing these a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're cutting them this way so that we can layer them in the lasagna. And I love combining butternut squash with carrots. The butternut squash I'm going to roast in the oven, but the carrots I'm actually going to steam them for a few minutes just to get them a little tender and uh, we'll use them in the layering. So it's a completely different take on a lasagna, but I just wanted something different. I wanted to have some vegetables on the table. This is a great uh, Thanksgiving casserole dish that you can make which the lasagna pan you can make ahead of time and all you have to do is stick it in the oven when you're pre preparing everything else this is already done and you know lasagna always tastes better the next day because all the flavors have a chance to amalgamate and blend together so perfect that's all basically all we're going to need okay just put some water and some salt. I'm just going to pop in the carrot. Bring it to a boil and leave it for about a minute. You, you don't want it to be too soft. You, you just want to have a slight fork tender. So 
off camera, what I did was is that I took the, the long neck of the butternut squash, I peeled it, and then I sliced them like this, right? This is ideal. This is what we're looking for. Then I'm going to get a cookie tray, and I'm just going to put a little bit of avocado oil just because it has a high smoke point and sprinkle of sugar, uh, sorry, salt, some pepper. dry time and we're just going to pretty much layer them on and we're just going to roast them up a little bit in the oven just so that it gets a, a little fork tender uh, I wouldn't say very fork tender just enough that you can put in the fork and like I want to and I've got different thicknesses here so don't worry about that because it'll all sort of cook out nicely and so perfect and then we're going to throw all this garlic with its jacket on because we'll extract that. This is a perfect way of reusing of using your garlic that's a little getting older. You just roast them up in there and then sprinkle a little bit more. Okay, so this was in the oven for about. So I just put the spinach with a little bit of water in the microwave and just steam that on high for a minute. Just a little bit of butter. And you're gonna get a nice caramelization. You see how I kept them in rounds? Because it'll just be easier when start layering as opposed to slivers. Some mushrooms. Let's saute this down. There is the butternut squash that we roasted off as well. So with the spinach, you want to remove all the water, so put it in a sieve and drain it out and get all the water extracted. So I just sprinkled some nutmeg. This mushrooms love nutmeg. Perfect. Let's put this aside. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do the ricotta. Scrape everything out. This will be one of the layers. And then I like to salt it. So that's about a half a teaspoon of thyme. A pinch of salt. A pinch of white pepper. What I did with the spinach is I just put it in the microwave for about three minutes because mine was pretty frozen. And then I drained off the water. Do not throw that out because we're going to utilize that. So you want to make sure you have as much of the water removed from the spinach. So I just do this. It's been sitting here for about 10 minutes draining off. The idea here is you just want to have a dry spinach as possible. You could put this through a cheesecloth if you want as well. I'm just being lazy, thus figured not that much spinach to do this so okay so I think that is good let's move that aside don't throw that out keep that and I'm gonna pop it into the cheese stir this and then let's add an egg whole egg this is a great filling. You could do, use the same filling that I'm doing here and stuff manicotis or cannellonis with it. Perfect. And what I'm going to do is, I always like an element of surprise, so I'm just going to grate some Parmesan cheese into here. You don't have to do this step if you don't want to. Um, we love cheese, so why not? I would say that's about a quarter cup. All right. And spinach loves nutmeg as well, so just a quick little sprinkle. Mm, I love butternut squash and nutmeg and cinnamon mixed together. Just lovely. All right, we'll put that aside. So I just took the carrots off. 
and you can see that oops I can stick the fork in there this is a pretty thick one so it goes in nicely okay let that cool off I have to do the tomato sauce to cook off the uh, strained tomato and passata we're going to add some uh, mushrooms uh, in here as well so the black the black truffle mushrooms to get some flavor salt pepper season to taste and then we'll put things together so before assembling i like to either butter or oil the lasagna tray that just helps with cleanup later and things not sticking Okay, so there's a couple of ways we can do this. So we're going to add some layers. So here's the tomatoes, the tomato sauce that I just cooked off. So we're just going to add a little bit on the bottom. Okay. Now you can make this 100% pasta noodle free and just use the butternut squash or I am using the oven ready and I like to use like this brand. That's just my preference. So what I'm going to do is just layer a lower layer and I'm looking for the thicker ones that I did. Mm, it smells so good. And then we'll reverse that. Make it look like that. Fill in the gaps. And it's going to be such a surprise for people. People are not going to realize there's a butternut squash in here. Unless you tell them, of course. <laughs> Let them figure it out for themselves. Okay, that's a good layer. And then... I like to put a layer of pasta. I'll overlap them. Okay. And then get a little bit of the mushrooms. And we're going to grab some carrots and just layer them. So you really, as you can see, you really don't need meat at all. Take advantage of the fall harvest. And I do like to make the smaller casserole dishes like this because then I can just pop, I don't have to make the big one right away, right? I can just utilize the smaller one and then freeze the other. So you can have some today and some for Thanksgiving. Not over saucing it, not at all. The one thing I don't like is a wet lasagna. A little bit of a surprise. The black truffle shrimp. And what I'm gonna do is another layer. If you want, you could break a layer and put one there. It never quite works out for me well. But, and then I put a layer of the spinach. I can never have a vegetable lasagna. No matter how I make it, I always have a layer of the spinach and ricotta. It's my go-to. <laughs> and then a little bit of a surprise. We're gonna take the garlic and just squish it out of its skins. Nice, soft, and, and also by roasting it in the oven, it gets this beautiful mellow flavor to it, so we're all good. It's a perfect way of using slightly bruised garlic. No one's the wiser. And this is wonderfully messy. So if you like tactile in the kitchen, which I do, this is lovely. Butternut squash. Just drizzle that on top. Oh wow, look at that. Doesn't that look so good? Yes. Then I just top it off with another 
row of pasta. I do love these uh, no no cook lasagna noodles like oven ready. It uh, makes it faster. I used to hate making lasagna because I had to do that step. Oh, I hated it. It would always stick on me and so I was like, yay! The kitchen gods were at my mercy. Put some grated parmesan. Just a little. Just finish it off with a little bit of thyme. You don't have to do this stuff if you don't want to. That's my favorite way of doing it. Sprinkle as much cheese as you want. So that's a cup of grated Italiano cheese, which is a mixture of provolone, mozzarella, pizza mozzarella, Parmesan, and some a little bit of Swiss. Perfect is ready to go in the oven. So put that in the oven, um, broil it for about 20 minutes. You just wanna get this nice and golden uh, in here and soften the um, lasagna noodles. All right, let's put that in the oven. Look at those layers. That is so awesome. So let's give it a try. All right. Let's dive into this. Let's give this a whirl. Mm hmm. Yes. That's nice. It's different. It's hearty. Definitely replace a meat lasagna. You can go completely vegetarian, especially for Thanksgiving and holidays. You definitely want to have some vegetarian options on the table, and this is a perfect one. Wow. You try one more. And it's not mushy, there's a bit of crunch. They suggest you try this. It is really, really awesome. Okay. <laughs> I better stop eating. <laughs> I always get excited when I make a dish. So thanks again, guys, for joining me. This is my roasted butternut squash lasagna. It is 100% vegetarian. If you, you want to go vegan, you can replace the cheese with vegan cheese. And... I hope you guys do it. It's really awesome. And I made an extra one, as you can see here, that I can slice up and portion out for meal preps for lunches uh, for the next week or so. So for the next week, that's not only going to last for three or four days. Once again, thank you so much for joining me. Always greatly appreciated. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you are a returning champion, thank you for coming back and showing your love. If you have not yet subscribed, consider hitting the subscribe button. We would love to have you join our community. Once again, thanks for joining me. Have a fabulous evening. Ciao for now.